Dear colleagues in the academic fraternity, you are most welcome to this session. I'm going to reflect with you on how to design, implement, and support online learning. Of course, uh, given this period of COVID-19, most uh, universities and colleges are transiting to uh, remote learning. And therefore, there is an urgent need for staff to uh, think, reflect critically on how to go about technology mediated teaching. Uh, well, uh, we are found in Papua New Guinea, of course, in the South Pacific. And uh, we are Papua New Guinea University of Technology. We have about 3,500 students and uh, we offer both graduate and undergraduate programs. But uh, in this course, I want to, by the end of our session, be able to, you should be able to determine key considerations when designing, implementing, and facilitating online learning and teaching. And also, we are looking at you being able to identify affordances of technologies and how they can be used in blended learning environments. Now, I've divided this section, this presentation in three sections. We are looking at designing, we are looking at implementing, and facilitating. You will realize that uh, we play different roles in academia, and so there are those who deal with the designing, there are those who uh, implement, but all of us, of course, are supposed to help facilitate. Uh, to get the best in this session, when on teaching online, you got to maximize on your personal learning networks. It's very important for you to be able to use informal networks of uh, colleagues you've met in conferences, your spouses, your family, your, your loved ones, and those with whom you work at campus, and uh, maybe in your departments, reviewers. But again, don't forget students because they are very critical partners in this online learning journey. It's also very important that we think about our critical friends and those who can help us on board technology. Maybe you can invite them to your virtual environment, your, your learning management systems, so that they help you navigate the environment as you on board technology mediated teaching. It's equally very important, colleagues, that you think about friends beyond borders. Do not necessarily limit yourselves to friends with whom you, you work or teach or with whom you are in the same field, but think globally and, of course, act locally. Uh, I would have wanted to know uh, how you fare, where you are with the technology, but uh, it's very, very important for you to you know, uh, note that instructors' attitude towards technology use and the levels of digital literacy plays a very, very important role in shaping overall learning experiences. You know, uh, despite issues in access, emerging research on technology and, uh, in, and use, of course, with students, shows that students want to readily embrace technological shift in higher education, and they want more incorporation within the classrooms. But uh, in, now this, this sudden shift to online platforms for students' learning and, you know, and faculty, we must as a faculty quickly develop the competency to provide quality instructions and class engagement that travels in-person courses. Uh, it's, it's very, very important for us to be able to appreciate that uh, technology-enabled learning will be very, very important. And we must uh, be willing and able to use technology to our advantage to promote the learning outcomes in our classes. So let's understand the context of digital learning. It's very critical for us to appreciate the learning environment. Uh, you know, there are many terms and definitions in the field of online learning. We have digital, flexible, technologically enhanced, technology enabled, blended, hybrid, and all the terms, all the terms such as, you know, e-learning or distance learning or computer-based learning. But uh, for our case in uh, higher education, and of course, world over in academia, digital learning should be a scenario where the campus or the university or the, the institution should agree on a campus-wide shared usage of the term online learning so that you agree on one terminology. If it's blended learning, so be it. If it's online learning, so be it. If it's technology-enabled learning, so be it. It's also very important that uh, the institution agrees 
to have well-designed courses that are very interactive with very engaging content. Uh, but of course, also we got to think about students, you know, and think about putting flexible deadlines that allow students to pace their learning. Most of them are also onboarding technology with us, and so we should take good care of them. Now, there, is, there are about three models of online learning, and the first one is what is called on-campus face-to-face model, uh, where technology use may relate to content only. Technology fetches for us content. Then we have fully online environments, which is synonymous with the terms such as distance learning. And, and this is, uh, for example, a classical one will be those who do massive online uh, courses, MOOCs. Uh, you register online, study online, graduate online, and of course probably get your transcripts under the credentials online. Then we have blended learning, and also known as mixed mode or hybrid learning, uh, which combines the two environments that I've talked about, both on campus and probably uh, fully online. So it's very important for us to appreciate your, our institutional context. And this brings me to uh, you know, appreciate your institutional context. Uh, think about the learning management system that is available for all staff. Maybe you're using Moodle or Google Classroom. Uh, but also think about that is for classroom management. And then we have uh, platforms that support face-to-face -face conferencing, video, video conferencing. Maybe you're using Cisco WebEx. In our case, maybe we're using Google Meet or, or Zoom. But you need to agree as a university on which platform you are going to use so that you do not have maybe over, you do not over uh, stretch the capacity of your students. But uh, worth noting again is that faculty must pay attention to institutional frameworks. If you decide to go fully online, then everybody must be online. But we've got to agree on this together as a university. Uh, are you doing blended or you're partially online and you're blending as well? But it's very important for staff to know our main learning management systems, to also know our video conferencing tool that is sanctioned by the by the, by the university that we are working with or the institution you're working with. And the staff must adhere to this. And of course, this will not limit you to what you're used to in case you're used to other, uh, other platforms, as long as they can be integrated to the framework that the university sanctions, uh, it's okay, so be it. It's very, very important also that we think about moving from <clears throat> ad hoc to design-based online learning. You know, it's your institutional policies and infrastructure will influence your design. But uh, whether you're teaching online, face-to-face, -face, or in blended mode, the principles of online design are the same, and they include keeping the characteristics of, of, of your students in mind when designing. It's very, very important that you think about engaging these students in activities that help them achieve the desired learning outcomes. Also, give these students sufficient resources and guidance to engage in activities that help us, of course, achieve, achieve the learning outcomes. It's also very, very, very critical that you think about assessments creatively. And uh, those assessment tasks must be mapped so very well so that uh, they are in tandem with their lecture plans and they help us still achieve the learning outcomes. Now, I want to reflect with us on some frameworks for incorporation of technology in learning. The first one is what is called Technological Pedagogical Content Knowledge, otherwise called TPAC. Now, in this framework, we expect educators in uh, online business to be uh, very technologically, uh, to be competent in technological use, technology use. We also think about their pedagogical competency and as well as their content mastery in the subjects they would want to, to, to teach. And so TPAC calls on staff to be competent in technology, competent in pedagogy, and also be very calibrated with their content. We have TEAM, otherwise known as Technology Integrated Matrix, which is also another uh, framework that has about 25 uh, components and helps us think reflectively on how to uh, incorporate technology in learning design. 
And then we have substitution, argumentation, modification, and redefinition uh, framework. And uh, this one this is designed to help educators infuse technology into learning. You know, and it describes the use of technology to enhance what used to be analog measures, moving from a replacement through a reconceptualizing approach. Uh, uh, these are very uh, important concepts that I think most staff should spend more time uh, reading about. Then we're going to think about relating technologies to learning experiences. Depending on the learning outcomes for the day, you should think about the learning experience you going to uh, you 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 are trying to get vis-à-vis -vis the methods or technologies that you should use. If you want them to learn apprehension and attending, then of course text, TV, podcast, iTunes, YouTube will be classical, classically useful. Want them to learn debating and discussions? Of course, discussion boards, online conferencing, social networking will be very, very useful. You want them to learn how to experiment <coughs> or practice, then library field trips, simulation, virtual, world, virtual labs, and gaming will equally be very helpful. But you can explore this further online and uh, be able to customize them to your context. So how do we engage learners so that they are with us? It's very important that you think about uh, uh, what is the technology environment that is familiar to your learners. If your students are generally school leavers, it is likely the case that they will love social media and be familiar with mobile apps, whereas mature age students may be more familiar with work-related technologies. Uh, think about what is the technology environment that the industry would want your graduates to, to possess. Employers might expect graduates to be familiar with online video conferencing for meetings, or the use of cloud-based information management or project management tools, or the use of industry-specific technologies such as uh, AutoCAD. Now, think about students' learning being enhanced also by the use of digital uh, tools that you are using. For example, a blog can be shared with a worldwide audience to expose learners to a variety of perspectives. Now, also, are you using these asynchronous collaborative tools such as discussion boards and weekly, wikis and blogs? The, of course, this creates a more inclusive environment and will help especially uh, more introverted students open up and enjoy and, and build a learning community. Now, finally, are you attempting to future-proof the learning experience of your learners? You know, uh, for example, by including mobile technologies and recent innovations such as wearable technologies or artificial intelligence that they may ultimately meet in the field. Now, uh, this brings me to interesting your learners to be on the same learning journey with you. It's very important that you choose the most appropriate design and collaborative tools so that students are not passive in the learning experience. Now, try scaffolding interactions between learners online, including support for and access and motivation in socialization, information exchange, knowledge construction, and, and development. It will be very, very important that you try to scaffold and support these processes. But also, integrate the digital and physical environments. E.g., uh, have online activities. Have some online activities uh, that will help to continue the discussions and the learnings that took place in class. Uh, it's also quite important that integrate physical and digital environments so that you can, uh, you know, have the best of experience with your students. Just like you need to think about integrating digital tools. Do not be one-sided. Kindly use your LMS as, long, uh, rather, as well as other applications and use technologies, uh, use technologies in assessments. Uh, so that your, your, your assessments are more authentic. But remember to be in tandem with the lecture plans and uh, the learning outcomes that were properly mapped in your contract with the students. Now, how do you do site design, navigation, and user experience as a uh, staff? It's very important 
that uh, the most important aspect of navigation and user experience that you will need to implement in the learning flow, rather is the learning flow and the learning journey of your students. Consider how students access your activities and materials. Now, for example, you consider weekly design so that students are clear about what to do in a particular point in time with additional quick links to important parts of, of your lectures, maybe assessments, maybe additional resources, and, and so on and so forth. Use graphics, including icons, tables, links, and very clear menu structure so that the students are able to progress through your site with ease. Uh, this brings me to open education resources. When you're going to teach online, you've got to think about uh, these resources that are already available. You may not have to recreate or reinvent the wheel, but uh, think about uh, the, the, the licensing. It will be very absurd for you to be uh, accused of um, inappropriate use of content that is uh, available online. Of course, available online does not mean it's free. So think about the Creative Commons licensing frameworks that are given to us. Uh, think about those licenses that are res less restrictive and uh, use them because the more restrictive ones may, may really discourage or put you in a very compromising situation. It's also very important that you think about evaluating your class or evaluating your, 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 your performance. Of course, uh, in your unit design, consider the importance of obtaining feedback from your students. You may want to use survey, quiz, or feedback tools within your learning management systems. You may need not to wait until the students have completed your whole unit for, you know, for example, to obtain the feedback. If you do it in the early, early uh, uh, period of your meetings, you'll notice that you can benefit greatly. You can, uh, for example, have them let you know, tell uh, what should you start doing, what should you stop doing, what should you continue doing, and this will greatly enhance uh, the experience of what you are, uh, you know, the concepts that you are teaching. Uh, for example, consider, considering, consider obtaining feedback early on if you are trying a new tool or a new technique. Now, we want to also think about learning to facilitate. It's very, very important for us to build content online. I am not so uh, I'm, I'm persuaded beyond a reasonable doubt that we need to build uh, our persona. An important aspect of teaching in digital environment is building presence or an online teaching persona. So presence is important uh, to students' success in online courses. And the, there are different aspects to building presence. The first one maybe will be to uh, set a tone. Uh, take the online environment into consideration. Ensure you use feedback as a communication strategy. Use sharing as well, uh, so that students are able to continually follow you online. Give clear guidance to students about the expectations for, uh, for participation. Set rules of engagement. At what time should they be in class? Where should they be? How should they behave with their microphones? Should they mute it? And when should they unmute it? And where should they take the lecture from? That is very, very important. When should they submit assessment tasks? And how should they participate in the discussion boards? So sustain participation via questioning, focusing, and modeling. And of course, shape the direction of learning and, progress, uh, and progressive meaning making uh, and understanding in your classes. This will be very helpful for the teaching learning process. Now, we also need to pay attention to supporting teaching staff who are online facilitators. Uh, teachers should be encouraged to collaborate with online teachers elsewhere so that they can be able to listen to their voices as they transform and create their online teaching personas. We should emphasize that teachers engage in pedagogical inquiry and creativity. Let them pursue professional development programs. Let them pursue uh, uh, maybe online uh, MOOCs, massive open online courses, so that they are more focused on, you know, uh, pedagogical inquiry. 
but also we should encourage staff to partake or be party in student or learner centered pedagogy where the learner is at the center of the uh, the, 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 the inquiry you think about the concept of the sage on stage vis-a-vis the guide on the side and we expect to hold the learners accountable for the content that is yet to be covered so please think about uh, online teachers being encouraged to promote community building around online teaching like i mentioned before your online community is very important and think about creating cognitive presence your social presence is critical just like your you know i've talked about cognitive and 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 social presence create a, a rapport with your learners build a community of trust where learners are free to express themselves so that you together participate in meaning making proactively as 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 uh, a team now it's important that we think about digital literacy and all institutions that are onboarding technology mediated teaching should incorporate digital literacy aggressively as part of their strategic agenda both for students and staff we uh, like i mentioned i mentioned before it's very important that uh, you remember that uh, uh, despite issues in access emerging research on technology use shows that students want to readily embrace a technological shift in higher education and they want more incorporation of technology into their learning experiences so it's very very important that you involve students in the, uh, pursuing their digital, digital literacy there are staff who may be digital immigrants but we got to help them on board technology enable teaching we may have those uh, staff who are uh, digital natives already they can help those who are on boarding on board quickly but also we got to pay attention to uh, the processes so that we introduce them uh, uh, we introduce them uh, on 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 a staged approach so maybe starting with the lightweight technologies moving upwards but there is a uh, exponential upside on investing in digital capability of both staff and students i want to invite you now to reflect on your online teaching as i conclude my presentation you should double check your assumptions on online teaching as an academic it will help you improve both the learning experience for students and your own experience as a teacher most staff tend to assume uh, that being familiar with the online environment and being able to know, to use a computer is enough to help prepare your students for online learning now well that may be absolutely wrong and you may have to uh, rethink your assumptions but of course another assumption is that if you put it online then the students will definitely read it but good news is that uh, you can now see who has accessed what and when by looking at the learning analytics on your learning management system that you are using now this is a schema of what i've been presenting this is uh, a recap of the entire presentation i've been saying that as staff you need to know yourself if you're going to teach online know your demographics know your limitations know your your, your strengths but also know the strengths of your learners and the technology affordances how much do they know how much technology do they have at their disposal but also appreciate the context of digital learning the learning environment is very important get to agree on the terminologies you'll be using to refer to learning or other online learning agree on the learning management system that you'll be using as a university agree on on the maybe video conferencing tools that you'll be using but also permit staff the freedom to in, integrate other platforms and softwares that they are comfortable with but also which complement the broader intent of uh, teaching and learning when it comes to design we have asked you to think about the role of technology in your learning think about the role of your learners build a community of inquiry together of course think about the technology affordances that the university has or that the learners may be able to access think about how to incorporate technology in a way that promotes the learning uh, the realization of the learning outcomes then engage the learners ensure that they are able to onboard your assessment tasks 
they are able to you know participate in the discussions they are able to you could even as allot some marks on the discussion whoever participates maybe get some two marks which ultimately contributes to the summative assessments think about collaborative design i've talked about this collaborate 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 with the people both within and without your institutional uh, boundaries then when it comes to implementing i've tried to suggest that you should be very proficient with the virtual learning environment get to know how to navigate and create a very a very comfortable ex, uh, use, user experience you know as they as they navigate your uh, your learning management system have clear menu structure and of course use multimedia and here i said do not create uh, do not reinvent the wheel necessarily you can create short videos and use software such as Camtasia and other software video editing tools to help you create very uh, in uh, short sharp videos but also you can use um, uh, narration or voice over powerpoints you can use uh, ppts embedded with the videos you can use so many uh, other powerful tools but also do not be afraid or shy off from using email as a powerful tool when it comes to interacting with the students then i've talked about evaluation allow your students to evaluate you as early as possible and let it be continuous but this will help you reinform repurpose refocus your presentations in the subsequent deliveries in class then go forth and create and when it comes to facilitation i've just uh, uh, in, 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 have uh, emphasized that we need to be digitally literate both students and staff we need to constantly up our game when it comes to technology and we need to know how to use data as lecturers there are lots of data that we shall be collecting from the lms data on attendance data on participation data on uh, maybe uh, punctuality now this data can be harnessed uh, if you collaborate with your icts departments or those who manage your uh, your lms and you can use them to build research your research portfolio build a study for example on gender and participation in discussion in your classes and build a study that will really uh, you know is is data driven because you already have data and then be a facilitator ensure you make learning happen do not be a barrier to learning please be uh, an enabler to learning thank you so very much that that that, that, that is our reference and thank you true uh, once more we hope we've been of service to you uh and remain tindi seje nuru once more bye bye